a, uh, I'm making this just to keep a record of things. Um, of my, I was using the computer all day yesterday, and I thought I was maintaining good posture, but I don't know. Maybe I, my head was forward, and I didn't notice it. Um, but um, my sub sub occipital muscles are very tender. The ones like right right below the base of your skull, especially around. The, uh, my spine and I guess a little bit off to the side too but like they're all just really tender and sore and like the hissing and uh, tinnitus I have is worse and um, yeah so I just want to make a note of that I've also been thinking um, about getting more posterior injections but I don't know I mean the several that I got before didn't resolve my forward C1 issue. They did make my ligaments stronger, but they didn't get the C1 to back off at all. And I've seen no evidence of that happening for anyone. Like in all the posts and forums and Reddit and Facebook for people getting PICL treatment and posterior injections, I've never seen say, okay, here's my C1 before, and then I got injections, and here's my C1 after. You can see where it moved backward. Um, and, and I've just never seen that. And the only time I've seen people get relief from their C1 is through surgery. Um, like when they have internal tegular vein compression, is through surgery, either by fusion or um, by. Um, like C1 shaving where they file down part of the um I don't know if they cut it off like a piece off or file it down or however whatever tool that you do to use it it's probably a, a file and um to make give you a few more millimeters of space on the transverse process that's squashing against the internal jugular vein and then fusion I've also seen um help but only in the instances where they're looking for it like people can get fusion and it can make your internal drug vein compression worse because they'll give you a fusion and now the c1 will be a little bit more forward and they do the fusion through the back of your neck so um they don't know what's going on in the front which is fucking stupid if you don't mind me saying <laughs> uh like I mean, I've seen that happen more than once, and it's like, how do you how do you have the C1 pushing it? Like, the internal drug veins touch your C1, and a normal, healthy person, they're touching it by default. And you got about 9 millimeters space between that and the styloid. And if you do a fusion, and you're not aware of the, that gap between the styloid and C1, and you make it smaller, like, you fucked up. And in a bad way, because it's not like a small, like you're drilling, you're basically putting a, taking a power drill and uh, taking a screw and drilling two vertebrae together. I mean, I think you take the disc out before you do that, but that's the general idea. So, um, yeah, so I just want to say, like, if you do use a computer, the thing is, though, like, I thought I had perfect posture and, um, you know, like I'm sitting, like I've I've done that before, but it's like sometimes you know you you're not thinking about it and you catch yourself with your head a little bit more forward. But man, like it puts more strain obviously on the muscles and the ligaments when you do that. So I guess I screwed up. But but I just I feel like dizzy. Like I'm like it feels like you know like just like you you're dizzy. You spin around a bunch in your chair or whatever. And it's like. I just I feel like this pressure in the back of my neck and I feel dizzy and and the muscles hurt like I can lay down I don't have sheets on my bed so I'm washing them but like uh, I lay down um, but then of course that makes the tinnitus worse not it's not as bad like the tinnitus used to get a lot a lot worse when I would lay down now it's like just like twice as bad instead of like five times as bad or like 10 times as bad, it's like, because it used to be like my internal jugular veins had like, through the ultrasound, you, I did it standing up and laying down, standing up, there's some regular flow, so tinnitus is definitely diminished some when I'm standing up, 
Like, I'll be laying down in the morning, and it'll be like, my ears will be hissing and ringing, and I'll get up, and it'll be like instantly quieter, like within a few seconds. Um, and then that coincides with the internal jugular veins opening up a bit. And you can see that on ultrasound. And when I lay down, they get more squashed. Like, they get squashed so bad, they're pretty much shut. And then pressure builds up and pushes a squirt of blood through. And then they're shut again and push a squirt of blood. So it's like, it, they're really backed up um, when I lay down. But I guess that's improved some. I haven't checked it in like three months. Um, but through the neck exercises and uh, curve correction. Like with this stuff. Uh, this thing basically wears a necklace. So the, the heavy part goes on your front of your chest and the thumb thing goes on the back of your neck and it makes your neck have more of a curve because my, my neck was straight and that's about 15 pounds. I got it from uh, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Lord's Chiropractic, but also Caring Medical does it. There's probably other places in the country that don't. But um, uh, and my neck curve has improved. I've had that before and after x-rays and the neck curve's improved and I have more space between my styloid and transverse process and my C1. It used to be like three millimeters, I think it's five millimeters now. So a few, middle, a few more millimeters, it's nice, it's a little quieter and it's even like standing up and laying down. Um, but I don't know, I'm still looking into surgery because um, I'm just fucking tired of it. You know, two years of wanting to die, it's like, ugh. Uh, but it wouldn't solve like that the issue of like me having bad posture at a computer or like bending over and like doing stuff like if i was cooking for hours or something i would put strain on my neck like it's not going to fix that exercise maybe additional posterior like stem cell injections um and it, like i gotta strengthen my neck and also take it easy on my neck when i'm not exercising it um because whatever, and, and then the diet, like I can't eat gluten or sugar anymore. I mean, I have a bit of sugar, like I had some Kavita probiotic, and I had like three grams of sugar, but it's like I'm not, I'm not eating like cake. I mean, even if you exclude the gluten from it, like there's a lot of sugar. Um, but yeah, I don't eat gluten, because when I would, I even, I ate some bread accidentally the other day, and I was like, um, I felt sick to my stomach and all my joints hurt so bad. Like my hand hurt. Like I have uh, du Dupree ones. I think that's how you say it. Contractures. I don't know if you can really see them, but there are these like tight spots up up in here. Um, and you I, you kind of like see this similar. The light's not great. Um, like they look kind of similar, both hands. But when you actually feel this hand, you can, it, you can feel like solid lumps under the skin. Um, and if you Google I'm a church do, do pre ones contracture or just type in hand contractures um, you'll see pictures of it more extreme instances but those hurt and those are connected tissue uh, and scar tissue I think I've heard both um, but it's not muscle and uh, and then my elbow hurt my hip hurt my back hurt like just from a little bit of red it was it was just like crazy and it seems to be like the more the longer more time goes on the more like like i've been off gluten for a while like uh pretty much no gluten for like the last four months um excluding my test for my my endoscopy to check for celiac um but um when i was eating gluten then it, it bothered me and it was a pain but not this much. So it seems like more time goes on away from it. When I go back to it, my body's like, holy shit. <laughs> it might be because, too, like, if you're regularly eating what your body would consider a poisonous substance and attacking it. Because I think that's what causes the joint pain when you have gluten issues is that your body's response to it. Not the, like, gluten itself is just whatever. But your body, like, has an inflammatory response to it. So it, it gets shipped around your whole body. And lit my body anyway. So it goes to my joints, goes to my muscles, whatever. And then my body attacks it. And then, so if it's in the joint and, and it causes issues, well, you know, it's going to cause you pain. Um, that might be the source of my problem. Like, it might have been my root problem my whole life. Like, but I was always exercising. I never stopped. I never stopped. Like, my whole life. I know that's weird to consider, but like... 
since before I could walk, I was swimming, and then I joined swim team, and I was playing soccer and basketball and lifting weights, and I just never stopped for 38 years. Um, I, I didn't swim, as much, but I was always doing something. Like, if I wasn't playing soccer, I swimming. If I wasn't swimming, I was playing basketball or soccer. I was always lifting weights. I was doing yoga, running, um, stuff like that. Um, like P90X in the morning before work for an hour, come home, play soccer for three hours. You know, like, um, so I was always doing physical stuff. But there's one part of my body I never exercised specifically, never targeted. I'm sure it got some workout, but um, my neck. So I think what happened was that, like, you know, over time, my neck uh, had issues. Um, my neck fell apart first. Because, like, so I'm eating gluten my whole life. My whole life, my connective tissue is degenerating, but I'm rebuilding it. Um, so my body's having a response to it. Um, and, I mean, even in my, like, mid-20s, I was having issues with my joints, but... I was just, you know, I'd work out a lot and eat healthy and I got through it. But then my, then my neck really had issues. Like, if it was, like, the middle of my back, it wouldn't be, like, a big deal, right? But it's the top of your neck right here, so you get tinnitus, you get all that shit. Like, I had problems with my, my wrist. Like, yeah, it was, like, really cracking. I'm like, there it goes. Sometimes it cracks really loud. But it's, like, that's in my wrist, right? Like, so what? Um, so, and, and plus when you play sports, everyone has joint problems. So when I say, oh, like my knee hurts, my ankle hurts, everyone's, everyone says me too. So you think you're normal, but it's like, no, like I actually have like joint problems. I have something that's causing more issues than the average person. Um, but yoga helped me the most out of everything. Um, but anyhow, so I stopped exercising when I hurt my neck. And then my whole body started having problems. Uh, and then I stopped eating gluten and then I started having less problems from my whole body. Um, but I only recently did, like four months ago. So if that might have been the root cause of all of this, it might not be EDS, it might not be like all that shit. It might not be genetic. Or, well, I guess it might be somewhat genetic. I mean, gluten, as we know it now, is like a genetically modified thing that we're not supposed to be eating, like the kind of wheat that people grow now is not what we evolved along with. Like the kind of changes that happened in wheat would have taken thousands and thousands of years to develop. And probably wouldn't, we wouldn't even never have eaten them anyway, because we would have kept eating the old stuff that we all, we knew was good. But we switched to this modified stuff because I don't know, it grows faster more of it. I don't know. It's better somehow. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. More cost effective. But so we have this wheat. It's like different. Like if you go to Italy, you know, it's different. You can eat that. A person with gluten intolerance can eat that old style wheat and not have any issue. Um, so there's that. Um, uh, from what I've heard, I've never done it. I've, I've uh, seen people do that. They'll, they'll be gluten intolerant. They'll eat that wheat. No problem. Um, but so anyway, I'm, I'm eating this stuff and I've, you know, my body doesn't agree with it, genetics don't agree with it, fine, but I don't have like a genetic condition like EDS, which is specifically connected to issue independent of any diet. Like, it doesn't matter about your diet. You just have issues, but my, I'm not, I'm not flexible or anything. I don't have any stretchy skin. I, I guess I look a little younger than, I mean... I look tired and I look like shit, but I mean, like, my skin's kind of okay and hair and all that, but, um, I'm 39, but, um, but, but, and a lot of ES people tend to look a little younger, but still, I, I'm not, I'm just not flexible at all, and, like, I don't know, I had genetic testing for EDS that came out negative, but, if, the, so, gluten is my best guess for what's, damaged my connective tissue all over the place but also it's like i haven't been eating it for four months i've been working out i'm getting stronger i don't know i guess time will t i guess it, once i'm back to strong again then i can see oh then i can start comparing myself to other people and say like you know it, uh when when they do this 
whatever, go for a walk, stand in one place, lift weights, sit at the computer, whatever, like they don't have this problem and I do, then I would know like, okay, maybe I still got something going on, but being as I'm still weak, you know, but I've made some improvements like, um, um, like I was started out sled pulls at 40 pounds and now I'm doing a hundred pounds and, uh, do, uh, six laps, like every, every, uh, not every day, I have to have a day and then two days off and then a day and then two days off. Um, cause I need, you know, when I was younger, I'd do like one day on one day off, but I don't know. I figure I should take it a little easier now. Um, but I do that 100 pounds, and the next day I'm like, uh, I don't have that much pain. I'm like, I go for a walk, I don't even think about my knees, because your knees are primarily worked in that exercise, um, and your shins and your ankles, I guess, but, but my knees are problematic, and so I don't, I'm like, I don't even notice it. Whereas, like, when I first started at 40 pounds, I couldn't barely walk the next day. It was so bad. So I'm, I'm definitely improving in strength. Um... But my neck is like, I don't know, I was thinking of getting an iron neck. Um, people are always like, you know, be careful, don't overdo it. It's like, I'm not. <laughs> I'm well aware that my neck's weak. Um, and, I mean, I started at 40 pounds on a sled pull. I mean, that it feels like nothing when you're doing it. Because, how much do you weigh? Like, I weigh 170 well, right now, I think I lost some weight because I've been eating healthy, so about 165. And, um, yeah, 40 pounds is, doesn't feel like anything when you're pulling your own body weight is already 165 pounds. So, you know, everyone's legs are strong pretty much. But it's embarrassing when you go to the gym and, like, the 100-pound, 5-foot-tall girl is doing, like, twice as much weight as you. <laughs> but but the point is, like, I, I do start light, so... I wouldn't overdo it. I would, I would underdo it, see how I feel the next day, and increase it a very small amount, you know, do it again, see how I feel the next day, and keep going until I get to the point where it's like, okay, I have a little discomfort the next day. Okay, I'll stay there, you know, because a little discomfort in your joints is okay. A lot is not. You have sharp pain in your joint, don't do that exercise. Stop. But if you have a little discomfort, eh, it's good. Because your ligaments need to be strained for them, for your body to say, okay, we need to make, make, make this tissue more thick and uh, more more of it, more dense. Um, yeah. I've also been eating whey protein isolate because isolate doesn't have the milk in it, which is as in like, I mean, milk includes the whey protein, but it doesn't have the, like the uh, lactose. Um and it has proline, lysine, and glycine, which your body uses along with vitamin C. And there's probably other things I'm missing in there uh, that to make connective tissue. And it's got a lot of it. Um, so I'm drinking that, and, I, and I, that's been helping. Okay, yeah, I know this isn't uh, the most interesting thing in the world, but just informational stuff because... It's just so much going on, so much I'm trying, checking, doing, observing, that if I don't record it, it's just going to get lost. So it might not be helpful, but at least useful for me to go back. I mean, it might help other people, too, to say, like, okay, you know, most of it didn't apply, but this one thing did apply. But I, but I have to make these records, because uh, otherwise the information goes away in my brain. All right, I'll see you.